Torque. So we have two goals for this session. We want to introduce torque, and we also want to look at three equivalent ways to calculate the torque produced by a particular force. So torque, let's just go over what it is. Torque is the rotational equivalent of force. It's a twist applied to an object. So a net torque acting on an object at rest will cause it to rotate. That's similar to a force acting on an object at rest causing it to move in a straight line. And if you've ever opened a door, you already have a working knowledge of torque. So let's go over that process. So, to open a door, the force you apply is important, but where and in what direction the force is applied, is applied is equally important. So, if you apply a force at the hinge, that's useless, doesn't do anything. Equally useless, having your force go directly toward the hinge or directly away from the hinge. So, to maximize your effect, it's most effective to apply your force far from the hinge, perpendicular to the plane of the door. That's probably meshes with your experience. Okay, so forces can produce torques. The torque depends on the force's size, the force's direction, and the force's location with respect to the axis that the object is rotating about. So the magnitude of the torque is tau. This is the Greek letter tau. That's our symbol for torque is RF sine theta. So in the picture you see a rod and it's hinged at the left end. That's kind of the black and red dot that represents the hinge. And three quarters of the way along the rod we're applying our force F at some angle theta. Okay, so R here is measured from the axis of rotation to the line of the force. So for instance you can measure that along the rod itself. That would be out three quarters of the length. You can measure R any direction from the axis to the line of the force, but measuring along the rod itself is fairly convenient. Okay, so theta is the angle between the line you measure R along and the line of the force. Now you could say, well, that is actually the angle greater than 90 degrees, but it doesn't really matter because um, sine of theta and sine of the complementary angle is the same thing, and that's going to at the sine theta that appears in the uh, in the picture, in the equation. To find the torque's direction, what you can do is you can basically put your pen on the screen here and hold it at the axis. So you pin the object to the axis, and then you push on it in the direction of the force at the place where the force is applied, and the torque direction is the direction the object spins and the object in the picture will go counterclockwise because of that uh, particular force. So torque is zero when R and F happen to be along the same line and you maximize your torque when R and F are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so now we're going to go over three equivalent ways to find the torque. So find the torque applied by the string on the rod, in other words find the torque because of the force of tension. There are lots of other torques in the picture, but we're just going to worry about the one from the force of tension. So method one is just apply the equation. Torque is RF sine theta. Okay, so in this case, there is the force we're dealing with, the force of tension. We have an angle phi here labeled between the, the rod and the string itself. And so we just get our equation going R here is the length of the rod, L. The force in question is the force of tension, Ft. And then the angle is phi, so we do LFT sine phi. That's our torque, LFT sine phi. And again, that would be about that axis of rotation in counterclockwise torque. Okay, method two. Break the force into components, and then use torque is R of sine theta. Okay, so you can break that force into a horizontal component and a vertical component. Note that the horizontal component, Ft cosine phi, really goes right back through the, the axis of rotation. That's just like trying to open a door by pushing toward the hinge. It doesn't do anything. So in this case, it's only the Ft sine phi piece that gives you any torque. 
Okay, so in this case, we measure R the same way we did previously along the rod. It's the full length of the rod. The force we're dealing with here is Ft sine phi, it's that one component. And then we get sine of 90, and sine of 90 degrees is 1. So we just get Lft sine phi. That's the same thing we got with method 1. And again, the force component along the rod gives no torque whatsoever. Okay, so then we get the third method. We call this the lever arm met method. And this can be quite useful in particular cases. Okay, again, all three of these methods are equivalent. You can use any one you want, but sometimes one is easier to use than another in a particular case. Okay, so what do we mean by this? Measure R along the line that meets the line of the force at a 90, 90 degree angle. Okay, so you can extend the line of the force. You can make it as long as you want. Okay, it's got to go, you know, the force has to be along it. You can't move the line, but you can make it as long as you want. And then here we measure R from the axis along a line that has that L sine phi next to it. So it meets the line of the force at a right angle. Okay, so then we go, our R, we're going to measure along that line, not along the rod. So R in this case is L sine phi multiplied by the force, Ft, multiplied by the sine of the angle between the line we measure R along the line of the force. But by definition, with the lever arm method, that is a 90 degree angle. Okay, so once again we get L sine phi Ft, because sine 90 is 1. It's the same thing we got with method 1 or method 2, so all three are equivalent. Okay, so that's an introduction to torque and three ways to calculate torque. The end.